morning, everyone. Let's stand together. What a beautiful day. That nice crisp air out there getting us all up and going. So beautiful today, the sunshine. We're glad to have you joining us today for service during this special season of the year. We're coming to celebrate the glory of our Lord and of our Savior. So we have a beautiful scripture to begin with this morning. It comes from Luke chapter 2. It says, And in that vicinity there were shepherds living out under the open sky, in the field watching over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone all about them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all people. For to you is born this day in the town of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you by which you will recognize you will find him, a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Hallelujah. That's how the Savior of the world came into the world. And it was truly a great day in which we rejoice. And so we're going to continue to memorialize that day with this famous song that you're all familiar with. So join together with us and sing Mark the Herald.
a shout unto the Lord for his goodness, his grace, his mercy, his compassion, his faithfulness. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Come on, can we bless the Lord today with all that is within us to give him praise and glory for he is worthy, 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 worthy today. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Well, it's great to be in the house of the Lord. Great to have those of you joining us this morning all over the country. We thank God for you and what God's doing in your life. And we're just thankful for what God's doing here in this house. Why don't you take a moment, turn around and greet someone around you. Just tell them it's good to see him today. Just bless him in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. I love in that last song that we sang, the, the line that says, you came near from the everlasting. And in the song we're about to sing, there's a verse that starts out with the phrase, you didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. And that made me think of this scripture that I asked Gina if she would read. <clears throat> Philippians 2, 7 through 9. But latest and glory taking the disguise of a slave and becoming like a man. He humbled himself even further, going so far as to die death on a cross. Yet it was because of this that God raised him up to the heights of heaven and gave him a name which is above every name. Other name. And then we're gonna sing just worship him. What a beautiful name, the name of Jesus. Sing you were the word at the beginning.
come today, we pray, Lord, that your presence will fill every heart, fill every life today. Hallelujah. Be exalted, be exalted, be exalted. Be exalted in the heavens. Be exalted in this place. Hallelujah. Lord, be exalted in every heart today. Hallelujah. Lord, that's our desire is to lift you up and to glorify you and to thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, your goodness, your mercy, your salvation. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your salvation that you save to the uttermost, Lord. Beyond our comprehension, Lord, you save, you save, you deliver, you set free. You are so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We just praise you today. We thank you today for all of your goodness, for all of your faithfulness and your mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you. Lord, be glorified through our praise, through our song, through your word today. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your mighty name. Praise your mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 My people, I see you in the deepest thoughts and intents of your heart. I see when you weep, even without tears. I see your groanings. I see your joys. I see everything that you think about and your longings and your desires. I want you to know that you have the power to speak into those things and to rest in my faithfulness. You have the power to overcome what the enemy sends to your thoughts, what he wants to paint pictures of in your minds to make you cower, to make you bow to make you fear, take no heed to him. Only tell him to go away in my name. He must humble yourselves, resist him, and he will run away, for he is the coward. Bring those things that you're even afraid to ask. Bring them to me. Declare what I say about them. Find my word. Find what I say. Declare it till you believe it. Trust me. Trust me. Hallelujah. Let's just praise the Lord right now. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you for your word. Hallelujah. We thank you today. Oh, we thank you for your word that becomes a rhema to us. And oh, it becomes food for us. Oh, it becomes nourishment for our spirit man. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What great love the Lord has lavished upon us. The God of the universe longs to connect with you. So he's reaching out to you today by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And he's reminding us that he's given us the name of Jesus. That when we speak in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that we can share in the power of Almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The name of Jesus is a mighty weapon for us to use against the enemy. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. So let's just speak it out right now. Just begin to call the name of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, mighty Lord and Savior, Redeemer, oh, we praise you today. Hallelujah. Give us boldness to use your name with boldness and courage to speak forth and to make our declaration. Hallelujah. For the Lord says, make your declaration and it will be so unto you. Hallelujah. 
So, Lord, we praise you today for your word. Hallelujah. We praise you today for your encouragement, for your strengthening Holy Spirit. We thank you and we praise you today. Lord, be glorified in your people. Be glorified among your people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's praise him today as pastor's coming. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. we rejoice hallelujah. in your word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Isn't the Lord good? You know, I want to thank, uh, again, this is, this is a praying church. And, uh, you know, we've been, been praying all week uh, for several things. But I uh, want to praise God for a new granddaughter. Eight, eight pounds. Eight pounds. Go ahead and say her name. I... Aria Maeve Ray. Ar Aria? Aria. Aria. Mm -hmm. And also uh, Katie and Larry, uh, she gave birth to an eight pound boy. Eight pound, and, two uh, ounces. Yes. He's a big boy. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, Crystal, my daughter in love, just stepped out, you know, for, for a minute. But uh, she was in the hospital a couple of days ago. And uh, we prayed for her, and she did great yesterday and today. And here she's in church. Her and Michael, we thank God for that. Praise the name of the Lord. So, so God is good. God is good. And uh, we thank God for that today. And we thank God uh, for just touching her body. I was just talking about you, Crystal. Oh, did you hear me? You did hear me say my daughter in love, didn't you? Okay, well, you are. Hallelujah. So God answers prayer. God answers prayer. Amen. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles this morning to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And I'd like to read a couple of verses beginning with, with verse 10. John chapter 1, starting with verse 10. Says he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Are you glad for Jesus today? Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, today for your Word. May they be words of spirit. May they be words of life to us today. We just give you thanks for it in Christ's name. And everyone said... Amen, amen. You can be seated today. My message is Christmas through the eyes of the world. Christmas through the eyes of the world. A young mom wrote on Facebook, just set up the Fisher Price nativity under the tree and told the Christmas story to my children. At the end, I asked if they understood and could tell the story back to me, awaiting a great parenting moment, my son looks at me confused and says, where's the big bad wolf? You know, there's a lot of confusion surrounding Christmas, and it's not just with children. A cartoon explained the feelings of a lot of Americans today. It showed two homes decorated for Christmas. The one had lights everywhere. There was a plastic snowman in the yard. There was a Santa on the roof and a flashing sign in the front yard that said, Merry Xmas. The other home had only a simple manger scene in the yard. The couple from the first house was looking out their window at the manger scene in their, in their neighbor's yard and said, some people have to put religion into everything. 
But listen, it doesn't matter how you cut it. It's pretty difficult in this day and time to have a non-offensive Christmas. You see, the whole point of Christmas is that God came down to get in our faces and stake his claim to the world and to our individual lives. And that is offensive, no matter how much you dress it up. You see, Jesus being offensive is is actually very much a part of the real Christmas story. So it really, you know, shouldn't surprise us. And because it is offensive, the world, our culture, is busy avoiding the real point of it all. See, the world will celebrate Christmas without ever worshiping or meditating on the real meaning of this special season. Christmas in so many ways is no longer a Christian holy day. We have it all planned. Every minute is full. The holiday will come and go. And many will have done all their shopping and all their running around and whatever they're doing without, with no consideration for the reason behind the whole season. They'll they'll go to gatherings and get together at parties where Christ's name will never be mentioned. And the real meaning of the season will be completely avoided lest we make someone uncomfortable. You see, we're living in a culture today which is increasingly secularized. And there are many people who have no clue about what it all means. I heard of a person who gave a Bible to someone who was going through a difficult time. And uh, this particular person was in real need, and their life had, had been just one disaster after another. But even in all that time, there was never any really serious attempt to give their life to God and to follow him. So as they they gave the Bible to this person and, and encouraged him to read it, it was suggested to him that he might start by reading the Christmas story since it was that time of the year. The man looked at him in astonishment and said, you mean the Christmas story is in the Bible? For those of us today who know what the Christmas story is and and have read and heard the Christmas story many times from Scripture, a lot of us from our childhood, it seems incredible that someone would not know something that basic. But you see, there is a growing ignorance of spiritual things in this land, in this nation. Because there is an attempt, a, an aggressive attempt to separate our lives from any and all contact with or reference to a holy and a loving God. Christmas to many is just combing the stores in frustration. It's fighting someone for the latest action figure or fashion doll. It's camping all night outside Walmart and then getting trampled in a stampede at six in the morning by other people trying to get into the store. It's baking cookies and making candy and roasting hams. It's searching the, you know, the Christmas tree lots for just the right tree. It's wondering how you're going to be able to get what you want to get for everybody you have on your list and still buy groceries in January. It's rushing and running to get it all done. You see, the world has tried to take a Christian holy day and make it a holiday and gutting it of its real meaning while trying to keep the wonder and the joy of it all. But it comes across as exceedingly hollow and shallow to those of us whose lives have been transformed by the reality of that story. 
We will hear again this year, it always happens every year, of the controversies surrounding Christmas. And they will continue to get more and more radical, with many becoming paranoid about, you know, saying the wrong thing uh, about Jesus uh, being the reason for the season. The Christ child and, and any depiction of the nativity continue to be banned from more and more places. It's like this. Preparing for a large Christmas Eve family gathering, uh, a mother had been giving out orders like a drill sergeant. Pick up your things. Don't get your clothes dirty. Put away those toys. Well, her four-year-old daughter had been underfoot all day. So she sent her to the next room to play with their wooden nativity set. As the mother scurried around setting the table, she overheard her daughter talking to her toys in the same tone of voice the mother had used. I don't care who you are. Get those camels out of my living room. <laughs> you know, for years, many have attempted to get more than just camels out of the living room. Over the years, there's been a repeated and concerted efforts to get Christ out of Christmas. Yeah. But isn't that the reality of Christmas? A child is born into the world and the world ignores him at best and turns its hostility on him at worst. You know, at the time of the first Christmas, he was unwelcome. And many wanted to destroy him, as you know, as Herod surely made his attempt to do so and erase his name from the earth. And people are still, still a little fearful in some places to say, Merry Christmas. And we find that Christ is just as unwelcome in our world today as he was when he was born. And you see, people are still offended at him. People still reject him. People still try to forget him and ignore his presence. It's easier just to pretend that he never came and does not exist. Don't you want to ask the world the question, what are you so afraid of? What are you so afraid of? There's not that kind of reaction to the story and life of any other religious leader in, in the world like Muhammad or Buddha or Krishna? Why so much hostility toward Jesus? The answer is because the story is true. It's true. And the world has always understood that Christ is dangerous. He's not just one religious leader among many. He is the only Son of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is unique. He is Emmanuel, God who came to us in human form. And you see, to recognize that, <coughs> to recognize that means that everything must be different. It means that God is in search of you and me. And that we have a responsibility towards him. It means that God has a claim on your life. And that determines how I'm supposed to think and how I'm supposed to live my life. It means that I can no longer just live for myself. I'm obligated to live for God. And it means I have to recognize a higher authority than myself and surrender to that authority. That's what the world is afraid of. That's why they're afraid. This is why the scripture says, John said there in verse 1, 10 and 11, he was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Come on, he has overcome the world. 
And as Carlos has been beautifully and eloquently sharing in Sunday school every Sunday at nine o'clock on the Revelations, he will judge the world on that final day because he is Lord of all. Hallelujah. Come on, say that. He is Lord of all. One more time. He is Lord of all. And that's what causes the world to take offense at him. It is as the scripture says, when it refers to Christ as the cornerstone on which all life is built. First Peter 2, verses 7 and 8. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. And a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message. How much has been lost since that first Christmas day? The simplicity, the sacredness, the wonder of it all, the realization of God's wonderful gift, God who became man. He's laid down in the hay in the middle of a dirty stable when he had just come from the magnificence of his heaven. He came from being worshiped and adored by all the host of heaven to be spit on by the world. Later, he'd be hated and crucified by the world he came to save. And he is still unwelcome in many places in our land today. Many hearts still have no room for him. To many, he is just as much a stranger now as he was to them then. His welcome is no better. He is still looked on with suspicion and, and hostility by the world. But we should expect this as an unavoidable part of Christmas. The Gospel of John, it tells us what the meaning of, of Christmas could be if we were open to and open up our hearts to it. He says in John 17, 3, now this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Come on, that we might know God and Jesus Christ his son whom he has sent into this world. Come on, how many realize that's the real meaning of Christmas? Amen. What would it have been like if Jesus would have never came. How many know not good? What would the story of our lives be today? Where would the meaning of life be, let alone Christmas? And what could possibly give us a reason for living? and make sense of this thing we call life. Listen, without his coming, there is no meaning. Without his coming, there is no reason. There is no sense to life without his coming. But because he came, we can experience a purpose for our lives and know that our lives can become one with the purpose of God for the world. Come on, there is a purpose. Come on, there is a purpose for you. There is a purpose for you today. Come on, say it. God has a purpose for me. Come on, say it. God has a purpose for me. Say it again. God has a purpose for me. Hallelujah. Two women walked by a department store and they saw in the window a display with shepherds and angels and there was Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. 
How about that, said one of the ladies. The church is trying to horn in on Christmas too. Wouldn't you like to say to that lady, lady, you don't have a clue. You don't have a clue. Come on, folks. The king of kings owns Christmas. Come on, he owns the world. You're not going to find Christmas in the merchandise of a department store. All you have to do is look in the manger. It's all there. Nothing's missing. There are no false promises today. Amen. The simple message is as C.S. Lewis once put it, and I quote, he said, the son of God became a man to enable men to become the sons of God. Isn't that awesome? The word of God says in Galatians 4, 4, when the time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman. You see, the world, they might put up with a baby Jesus, but they don't want him to grow up. Many like the baby. You know, everybody likes babies. Many like the baby, but don't care so much for the title that comes with him, the Christ. Emmanuel, mighty God, everlasting Father, King and Lord. Isn't it great to be surrounded by his names? Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Lamb of God, Lion of Judah, Seed of David, Mighty God, King of Glory, Author and Perfecter of our faith, Prince of Peace, hallelujah. Come on, that's our Lord Jesus Christ today. Because if he's in the manger, he's containable, even manageable. But how many know today that he wasn't meant for the manger? He was meant for a throne. Hallelujah. Perhaps that's why the government doesn't want him on their premises. They can handle a baby, but not a king. Especially one who claimed to be the king of kings and lord of lords there in Revelation 19.6. Listen, the first time he came in obscurity vulnerability and, and humility. But his second coming will be in power and strength and majesty and glory. Come on, even so, Lord Jesus, come. Hallelujah. He always comes in a way that the world does not expect. He is unpredictable in his way. In spite of his love for the world. And how many know he loves the world today? That love is not reciprocated. We're too often, we too often are busy trying to establish our independence from God. However, God's heart is still open to us. Even if it makes him vulnerable. If Christmas is really true then there is a reason today for joy. How many know there is hope for the world and for the people in it today? Well, if it's not true, then there's no reason to celebrate anything. But God cared enough about the world. He cared enough about you and me and those today watching, he cared about you to send his only son into the world to redeem it and bring it back to himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That Christ succeeded in that task is evident by you and your presence today here in this place. He succeeded. Come on, we are here to give gratitude to God for his unspeakable gift of Jesus Christ. How many know he is Emmanuel, God with us? Can you take a moment and just thank him for who he is right now? That he is Emmanuel, that he is God with us today. Hallelujah. 
You know what that means? That means we can be forgiven. Hallelujah. We can be forgiven today. We can know him. The God who created the universe. The God who became man and dwelt among us. We can know him. We can have a relationship with him. And we can be a part of the kingdom of this great king. How many know today the trivial matters of this world no longer plague us because we have entered into a new dimension of life? How many can say, praise God, the light has come. Come on, has that light illuminated your heart today? Jesus Christ has pointed us to God and opened the door to his kingdom. How many realize today that God is approachable? Even this morning in the, in the giftings of the spirit, the tongues and interpretation, the word of the Lord to us. God's saying to you, he's approachable. You know, some... Sometimes people talk about, oh, the man upstairs or, you know, whatever. He's not upstairs. He's in our hearts today if we receive him. And he's approachable today. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest. And how many are glad today that he can live in us? Almighty God can live in us. And we know now that he desires to give us forgiveness and to give us peace today. How many realize that his love is no longer in question this morning? How many have settled on that today? There is no question of his love today. He has lavishly displayed it in a newborn child that can give us new birth today. How many have found that new birth today in Christ? Amen. What else can matter now? You know, we fret and worry about so much. What else can matter now? What other gift do we need? What else does God need to say? He said it all in Christ. But the unbelieving world, they failed to hear what God is saying. And I close with this, how accurately... The old spiritual puts it, sweet little Jesus boy, they made you be born in a manger, sweet little holy child. We didn't know who you was, didn't know you'd come to save us, Lord, to take away, to take our sins away. Our eyes was blind. We couldn't see. We didn't know who you was. You know, there was no room for Christ in the inn. But will you give him room today to live in you? Will you give him room to live in your heart? Will you today give him room to live in your heart? Jesus says to us in this Revelation 3.20, Here I am. Here I am. And I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Let's all open that door to Jesus Christ today and receive the fullness of his love and his purpose for our lives. Amen. Come on, stand with me and let's, let's just sing that chorus. Oh, come, let us adore him and just worship him today. Oh, you already have, I know. And thank God for that. But let's just come and let's adore him today. Christ our Lord. Hallelujah.
take just a few moments and just thank the Lord for who he is and for what he's done for us. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for stepping down out of the glories of heaven into this world to make a way for us to save us and set us free, to give us life and that more abundantly today, Almighty God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. after me, those of you watching, those of you here, dear Lord Jesus, I make room for you. There is room in my heart for you. All these other things are just superficial, but what is vital to my life is that you live in my heart, that you are my Lord and my Savior. So, Lord, I turn from everything else that would keep me from understanding that. Help me to realize the true reason for this season, and that is Jesus Christ. That is you, Lord, who came to give me life, and that more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, God, for giving your only begotten Son, that as I believe on Him, that I'm assured I will not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus, for life today. Hallelujah. Now just praise Him for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I pray those of you that are watching at home, pray that with us and receive also that love of Christ that God has. We thank, we're so glad that you're a part of us and we bless you. Aren't we glad for those who watch today, folks, and know that we're touching lives uh, all over this country. We thank God for that today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Put your hand out toward me this morning, your hands. And I wanna bless you with the priestly blessing today. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. God bless you. God bless again those of you watching. We love you. Love each and one of every one of you. Have a wonderful rest of your day and week. God bless you. Amen.